All right, let's take our Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Luke. Our lectionary scripture brings us to the 11th chapter of Luke, the first 13 verses. <clears throat> One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Let's pray. Lord, with those disciples long ago, we ask you, Lord, teach us to pray. Be now with me as I speak your word. Open it to our hearts and open our hearts to your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I recently went to a Benedictine monastery to browse their bookshop and to buy a card. They have very good cards there, so I was looking at the cards, and one of the monks came in, and we began a conversation. And um, in the course of that conversation, I asked him, you know, how do y'all recruit monks at this monastery? And he said, we don't, we don't. We make our presence known in various ways, including the internet, but we never encourage anybody uh, to uh, become a postulate. A postulate means a candidate uh, for a religious order. He says, in fact, I, I put people off. He says it's important that if you want to join our community that one has to ask and maybe has to ask several times and then we might say yes. And then he referenced the rule of St. Benedict which is what they live by and I looked this up so I want to read this to you. Here's what St. Benedict said. Don't grant newcomers to the monastic life an easy entry. 
like the apostle said, test the spirits to see if they are from God. So if one comes and keeps knocking at the door, and if at the end of four or five days he has shown himself patient in bearing his harsh treatment and difficulty of entry, and has persisted in his request, then he should be allowed entry. He said it's all a matter of persistence. And that's actually a key word translated boldness in our text today. Jesus tells this kind of funny story about a man who bangs on his neighbor's door at midnight asking for bread and he's told to get lost. Can't you see the door is closed and I'm in bed with my children. And, um, but the man kept on knocking. Now in that day, uh, a dwelling was like a one-room enclosure and the family would be all together including the animals so I'm sure when this man kept knocking, uh, it created quite a racket. And, um, but because the man persisted in knocking on the door, asking for bread, the man on the inside was fed up and he gave the man the bread that he wanted just to get rid of him. Well, it's an interesting story. Because of the man's uh, the word is, is, is almost um, outrageous persistence or shameless persistence. Translated in, in NIV here as boldness. Because of that, he got what he wanted. He wasn't going to take no for an answer. Now, this story that Jesus told is in the first part of Luke chapter 11, which is all about prayer. The disciples come to Jesus. They have observed him at prayer, and uh, they wanted to learn more about prayer, and they said, teach us to pray. John has taught his disciples to pray. Would you teach your disciples how to pray? And so Jesus gives them the model Lord's Prayer. It's a little different here in Luke from what you find in Matthew. This is a, a little shorter version. But Jesus gave them this model prayer. It, it really reflects the concerns of Jesus. And, uh, and I would love to encourage all of you to take the Lord's Prayer and to, to uh, m make it into your own words, including all of these concerns that Jesus uh, gives us in the prayer. So he gives them this model prayer. Then he tells that funny story about the man who kept knocking on the door wanting bread. And then he finally gives the threefold affirmation or admonition uh, to ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Those are in the present tense, which means keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Make it a habit to ask. Make it a habit to seek. Make it a habit to knock. You know, there is a mysterious thread running throughout Scripture where God seems to take delight in our persistence, uh, to, to desire something with all of our heart and soul and to not give up asking. Of course, uh, most famously, we have that story in Genesis 32 where Jacob is wrestling with the angel of the Lord, God really, 
he's wrestling with, with God and, um, and, and even though his hip is, is uh, taken out of joint with that wrestling match, by the way, I think that fight was fixed. Uh, even though he, his, his hip went out of joint, he held on to the angel of the Lord and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Oh, if we could only pray like that. God honored that persistence and gave Jacob the blessing that he wanted. Then we have in the Gospels, in, in the seventh chapter of uh, uh, Mark's Gospel, we have a story about that, that Gentile woman, the Syrophoenician woman, who came to Jesus and wanted Jesus to uh, cast out uh, a demon in her daughter. And Jesus said, no, it, it, it's not right to give the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Rather harsh statement. But this woman persisted and said, that's right, Lord, but even the dogs under the table get the children's crumbs. Wow, when Jesus heard that response of faith out of this woman, he gave her what she wanted, and he cured her daughter. Earlier in the second chapter of Mark's gospel, you've got four friends who bring a paralyzed friend on a mat. They want to bring him to Jesus for healing. Jesus was teaching in a house, and uh, there was such a crowd around him, they couldn't get to him. But they kept persisting. You know what they did? They took the man up on the roof and they removed the roof and let the man down on the mat. And when Jesus saw that, Jesus healed the man and the man walked. He, he, he honored their persistence. In the fifth chapter of Mark's gospel, you've got that woman with an issue of blood. Uh, she had had this issue for 12 years. She had spent all that she had on doctors and nobody seemed to be able to help her. And she thought, oh, if I can just get to Jesus and touch him, I'll be made whole. And she kept persisting. She pressed through the crowd until she touched the hem of his garment and Jesus made her well. Persistent prayer. Persistent prayer, now hear this, is not knocking on the door of God's heart so much that finally God is fed up or worn down and will give you what you want. This passage is not saying that God is indifferent or reluctant like that man who didn't want to wake his family up and give his neighbor bread. No, no. What it's saying is if, if a human being who is indifferent and reluctant to give can be persuaded uh, to, to give because of persistence, how much more will God who is generous and wants to give good gifts how much more God will give to those who ask of him, who ask and seek and knock. Persistent prayer and why it is honored, I believe, is because it reflects, it reflects a deep desire and passion and it comes from a deep place of love. You know, Paul, the Apostle Paul, was, he was passionately devoted to his spiritual children, the beloved children in Christ. And he prayed for them persistently. For instance, in 2 Timothy, uh, he said, I remember you 
constantly in prayer, day and night. He says in Philippians, I thank God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for you. In Colossians, he says, I have not ceased praying for you. See, this is what persistent prayer is, and this is what underpinned and empowered Paul's entire ministry. And the source of this persistent prayer is love. The love that Paul felt for his people. It was the love that touched and moved the heart of God to answer his prayers. That can be true for every one of us. Hey, I don't know what your prayer life is like. Uh, maybe it, it's weak. Maybe it's boring. Uh, maybe it's just dried up altogether and you're not praying. Maybe you need some persistence. Persistence in the sense that Paul prayed with intensity, with, with passion and deep desire. This story that Jesus told is about the man being persistent in getting bread is a story about intercessory prayer. He is advocating for his friend who came to visit him and he's not going next door to knock on that door to borrow some bread for himself. He's doing this for somebody else and he is stubbornly, shamelessly, outrageously bold and persistent. He's willing to break social protocol waking his, these people up, he's willing to, to break social protocol so that he can fulfill the code of hospitality and put this weary traveler up for the night, but first give him something to eat. This is about intercessory prayer, not just praying about your own needs, but uh, somebody else's needs, going to God with some somebody else's needs. Somebody the other day said, said, you know, I have a loved one who is in need of healing. Help me. Give me some tips. Give me some tips. How can I pray? How can I pray? And I said, well, and I told him about the story of those four friends who brought the paralyzed man to Jesus, letting him down from the roof. I said, read that story. Meditate on that story and imagine, imagine holding your friend who's in need of healing in the presence of Jesus. Imagine hold, bringing your needy friend into the healing, loving presence of Jesus and stay there for a while. You know, intercessory uh, prayer can be hard work, but those four people didn't give up bringing this man to Jesus, and neither should we give up in bringing our friends and loved ones to the healing, loving presence of Jesus. This is persistent prayer, which God loves, which God honors, which God blesses. He takes the offering of our desire and our love, and he uses it for good. Isn't it a wonderful, wonderful thing that God makes us his fellow workers and uses our love acting in intercession to bring about good in this world. So today, please, please, hear Jesus' admonition. Ask. Seek, knock, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. If you want your 
prayer life transformed. Pray like that. Pray persistently. Pray with your heart's desire. Tell God what it is that you deeply desire and, and are hoping for. Open your heart to God. Be passionate, not polite. Be passionate and pour out your heart to God and dare to say to God, I will not let you go until you bless me. Anything can happen. All things are possible with God. Well, let me come in for a landing here. Uh, he ends this, this passage by saying, um, every one of you who ask receives, he who seeks finds, to him who knocks the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead. Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. You wouldn't do that. If you then, though you are less than perfect, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Ask, seek, Knock. I think it's important to say, hear, hear me out here. I think it's important to say that God doesn't always give you exactly what you want the way that you want it. We just don't have the wisdom to understand our needfulness appropriately. We just don't have that wisdom. And so I think by, by God saying that he will give us the Holy Spirit in response to our request, what he means is the wisdom and goodness of God is going to Form is going to shape that which God gives us when we ask him. I've always loved Augustine's Confessions. I, that's a book you ought to read sometime. Powerful, powerful book. Augustine tells in his Confessions about his mother. Her name was Monica. Monica was this wonderful Christian lady a profound Christian who wanted her son, Augustine, to have a Christian vision. But I'll tell you, that young Augustine was a rascal. Uh, he, he was not really interested in those things that were dearest to his mother's heart. He followed the example of his profligate father, and he was so filled with lust and lived a life of great sensuality. But he was a very gifted young man. He was extremely smart. And um, he was from North Africa. Well, he felt, he always felt that Italy held more promise for him than North Africa. Italy held uh, artistic promises that North Africa couldn't offer uh, and, and couldn't, didn't possess. And he wanted to study rhetoric. And so he planned to go to Italy. Monica did not want him to leave her side. She felt like if he ever goes to Italy, you know, he will never become a Christian. I don't want him to leave me. He needs me. And so, one night in a chapel, she was persistently praying that he not go to Italy. She was so earnest in her prayers, but what she didn't know at that very hour, he was boarding a ship that set sail across the Mediterranean to Italy. 
he came to what was then the cultural center of Italy. It was Milan, Milano, Milan. Some of you have been there. And somebody told him, said, you know, Augustine, if you want to study rhetoric, here's what you need to do. Every Sunday, you need to go down to the cathedral and you need to hear Bishop Ambrose. He is masterful at rhetoric. And you don't have to listen to what he says. Just listen to the way he says it. He is a master. Well, Augustine actually did that. And do you know that one Sunday, while he was listening to that great uh, Bishop Ambrose, the wonder of the gospel began to break in to his consciousness and he was converted to Jesus Christ. He gave his heart to Jesus. And, 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 and then he went on, Augustine went on to become one of the greatest theologians in the Christian church, one of the great shapers of Western Christian thought. Now, Monica, his mother, did not know that of all the people in the world, the one who was most likely to reach her son was not her, but Bishop Ambrose from Italy. When Augustine thought about this and wrote about it later, this is what he said. He said, God denied the form of my mother's request that he might give her the substance of it. God denied the form of her request. She didn't know what was best. She thought maybe that the Lord would use her to reach his, her son, but God had something else in mind. It was someone else who was able to reach, reach him. God denied her the form of her prayer that he might give her the substance of it. What was the substance? She wanted him to know Jesus Christ. And it happened. It happened. Oh, dear friends, when you pray, know this. God knows what is best, and you can trust him. And God is not like the pagan gods, indifferent to us, reluctant to give. No, no, no. He's a generous giver. He wants to give good gifts to his children. You know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Trust the goodness of God, the one who hears and will answer in the best way your prayers. Amen and amen.